Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman, and welcome back to the final part of the covariance of the Schrodinger equation under a Galilean transformation. In this, um, in this video, I'm going to work with zero potential, so W equals zero, and the, um, the usual um, de Broglie relation I know there are several pronunciations of his name. I believe the correct one is probably de Broglie, but I've been using de Broglie all my life, so I'll just continue to go with that ignorant pronunciation. Um, so this is um, P equal H over lambda, also could be written as 2 pi H bar over lambda. Now, a classical wave under a Galilean transformation doesn't change its wavelength. And the easiest way to see this is imagine flying over the ocean an airplane. And if you take a picture and you measure the wavelength of the waves, it's going to be the same. And the reason is simply that, remember, time is universal in Newtonian and, and Galilean transformations, Newtonian mechanics. So we always freeze the image and we get the same whether we're moving or not. So um, you know, just look at ocean waves. from a moving plane. Now, several papers were published. There was some confusion for a while because we do know that under a Galilean transformation, P goes to P prime plus MV. Easiest way to see that is again go back to the original Galilean transformation x equal x prime plus v t prime and simply differentiate with respect to time you get v equal v prime plus v equal dx prime dt plus v or you know I should say uh, v goes to v prime plus v or p goes to p prime plus mv so, um, this V is the Galilean V, and these Vs are really the velocity of the object. So, I should put this dx dt equals dx prime dt prime. Anyway, P goes to P prime plus mv. So, it seems as if we have sort of like a contradiction between the uh, de Broglie relationship and the Galilean transformation. And it turns out that, that's, that it's a paradox, but there's an easy resolution of the paradox. And the resolution is, as we'll show, psi is not a classical wave. See, under a classical wave, the amplitude remains constant under a transformation. But we just showed in the prior part that in fact the amplitude undergoes a phase transformation. And that is the uh, resolution of the uh, paradox. So the way to think about it is Let's say we have a wave in the prime system, free, freely, free particle wave. That's all we're dealing with is free particles here. That's why I said W equals zero. So let's say we have psi of x prime comma psi prime of x prime comma t prime is equal to e to the i k prime x prime minus omega prime t prime. 
Let's see how that behaves under a Galilean transformation. Well, we know that psi of x comma t, so in the previous videos, is equal to e to the i f psi prime x prime comma t prime is equal to e to the i. We derived the function f in the previous video. mvx over h bar minus one half m e squared t over h bar. And then that multiplied by psi prime x prime comma t prime, I can substitute x prime, that's just x minus vt, and t is t. So this is equal to e to the i mvx over h bar minus one half mv squared t over h bar times e to the i k prime times x minus vt using the form that we gave of psi prime x prime comma t prime minus omega prime t. Now what we have to do here is just combine things in some cross ways and make use of the fact that the relationship between energy and momentum for a free particle is omega prime is k prime squared over 2m. Multiply by h bar, you get um, h bar omega prime is e. Here you get p squared over 2m. So, maybe I'm missing an h bar here. I'll figure it out. So this is equal to e to the i over h bar times h bar k prime plus mv times x and this comes from here some arrows. That goes there. And then I'm also left, this whole thing is going to be the phase, minus i over h bar, h bar k prime plus mv squared over 2m times t. And um, so the x terms, there's h bar k prime x over there. I mean, h bars cancel out. We get k prime times x, which is right. That gives us our x term. And the other x term is mvx over h bar. We have mvx over h bar all with the right sign. So that gives us the x terms. And then to get the uh, T terms, they're both negative, and this one over here gives me mv, m squared v squared over 2m, so it's mv squared over 2 h bar, so this gives me that when we square it. The cross term is going to give me 2m, cancels the 2m there h bar cancels, I'm just going to get k prime v with a minus sign that gives me the k prime v, so this gives me the cross term and then finally we get the omega prime using this over here h bar squared k prime squared over 2m I think there should be an h bar here okay so and this gives us that term over there so now we see that basically this is just our wave in the x t coordinate system. We have we have basically 
h bar k is equal to h bar k prime plus mv, which is what we want. That's the relationship p equals p prime plus mv. And then over here, we get omega, which is equal to e over h bar, is basically this term over here, which is p prime plus mv, which is p squared, what we should have squared over 2m, get the standard relationship. So this is the uh, end of the videos on the covariance of the Schrodinger equation under Galilean transformation. And this video we've shown that the, uh, the de Broglie hy hypothesis is consistent with the Galilean transformation. And um, everything works out okay because we have this interesting transformation. It's, psi is not the same as psi prime, but undergoes a phase change. That phase change makes it behave not like a classical wave, but like a quantum wave, and gives us these relationships. Thank you very much for watching.